What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be doing three low ABV cocktails. This is something we haven't done much on the show and uh, something that I want to do a lot more. So we are starting now, let's get into it. So the first cocktail we're doing today is called The Wrangler. It was created by a bartender named Micah Jones uh, of Sable Kitchen Bar in Chicago. And you know what time it is because we're doing a Chicago cocktail. We got to take out our Malort and do a little shot ski of Malort. Uh, I, 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 uh, I forgot to do this on a video or two. Uh, and some people reached out. Ooh. It's a shot, Marius. It's a shot of Malort. All right, bottoms up. I don't know how the tasting portion of this video is gonna go because that Malort's got that wormwood that just kind of blows your palate out. But what's really nice about it is that it's nice and bright and citrusy along with that straight bitterness. Um, I don't know if it's just because I've primed my palate with Amaro's, but I gotta say that Malort does not kill my palate the way it does some other people. Uh, it's it's not as much of a dare for me. Uh, the other thing is, I think I actually mentioned this in a video already, but I'm going to say it again. I love this juicer. Um, this was given to me by my, my mother-in-law. Uh, it is a large format juicer that sits flat on a surface and it is so awesome because you can put an entire, well, not a whole piece of fruit, but you can put it like a, a full half in there and squeeze it down to smithereens and then you just pick it up and pour it off the pour spout right there. And it's that's just pretty fantastic. Um, it is my favorite new toy uh, since we are hand juicing on the show now. So uh, the other thing is that you don't have to cut the ends off your thing. I even see people do uh, pomegranates in there. Throw a half a pomegranate yeah. in there. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, you could do orange in here, you could do half a grapefruit in here. Half a grapefruit would be a little bit big. Well, depending on the size of the grapefruit, but uh, you can do like the big fruits in here, which is a yeah, nice large format juicer. Pomegranate, yeah. which is a pain to do anything with because of the little... All those little things. Well, you know, but we already showed on this channel exactly the spoon technique. I know, but now you don't even do it. Chop it in half, put it in, <laughs> Yeah, there's done. nothing. There is nothing, uh, there's nothing uh, easier than that. All right, well, so what we're gonna do, first thing we're gonna do is gonna cut a lemon and then just juice it. It's really nice because you get all those oils from the peel that just go straight down and they don't go spraying out, which is really nice. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice and three quarters of an ounce of orgia. Today we're gonna be using the Liquid Alchemist Orgia, link below. If you live in the United States, you can get the ship to you. You can get it shipped to you in Europe as well, but it's gonna cost you a lot in shipping. Um, but today I didn't have the wherewithal to make my own orgia, so we're using the the store-bought, and this is my absolute favorite. We're doing three quarters of an ounce. And then, because we're doing low ABV cocktails today, we're gonna be using two ounces of East India Sherry. Put some ice cubes into our glass. Put some ice cubes into our tin. Marry our cocktail. Flip it around, give it a shake. And give it a nice strain. Then we're just gonna finish this off with a little soda water. And I like to pour it off the ice so that it combines. So what I like to do for this cocktail is give it a nice, very long, what they would call a horse's neck peel. And we just give it a little of the zest on top and then just work it in there at an angle. And then we're gonna give it a little nutmeg on top like so. Give it a sip, shall we? Oh, that's very nice. You know, so obviously the East India Sherry, that Solera Sherry is gonna be the main flavor profile on this cocktail. It just has like this really nice savory vibe to it, which really plays well with the lemon and the orgia. So orgia is a really nice way of incorporating sugar, but having it be more of a savory kind of style sugariness. It's not as sharp. You know, it's an almond syrup, so you kind of get that nut vibe to it. I don't know what more to say about it other than that it's awesome and you should go make it. So there it is, the Wrangler from Sable Kitchen Bar in Chicago. So the next cocktail we're doing today was first published in 1935 in the old Waldorf Astoria bar book and it is called a Sable, which is kind of funny because we just did a cocktail from the Sable Kitchen and Bar in Chicago, and then this one's called a Sable, and I didn't even plan it. It is one of those drinks that is so genius and so obvious that when you look at the specs, you're like, why did I not think of this? Or maybe some of you did think of it, I don't know. But it was done before you. All right, let's get into making it. So first thing we're gonna do is just a couple of you dashes of Fegans, which is the uh, Fees and Regans 50-50 orange bitters blend that I like to use. Three quarters of an ounce of London dry gin. I'm using Tanqueray today. 
two and a quarter ounces of dry vermouth. And that is it. See what I mean? Simple and genius and low ABV or lower ABV anyway. Give it a nice stir. Now you can feel free to stir this for a good long while. When ice is this dry, like just out of the freezer, it would be very difficult to over dilute this cocktail and you can, you can stir it for a good two minutes and you wouldn't over dilute. All right, I think that's enough. And then we're gonna just strain into our glass. Which gives us a nice wash line. But that's okay because I asked Marius to go get olives before we shot and he got the largest olives that he could possibly find. Like, I think that when Marius went to the store, he said, can I get some olives? I need them for a cocktail. And then the guy at the store was like, sure, and handed him some olives. And he goes, no, these are normal size. I need jumbo olives, the biggest olives that you have. Can you just give me the jar of the biggest olives that you could possibly have? And the guy was like, well, these are the biggest. And he's like, those are plenty big. You know what? These are so big, actually, that I don't know how they're gonna do. Oh, we can just do that, I guess. I want that to balance, but it's not going to. Oh, hey! Can balance it like that. What were you gonna say? You're like, actually, you know what? I don't appreciate your tone is what you're gonna say. No, I actually, I didn't get the biggest one because they had some that said jumbo olives and I thought those are too big. <laughs> and I looked at all the olives and these were the prettiest. And they just happened to say martini olives. So I was like, all right, well, that's big. Oh, do they actually say it? imported Spanish Queen Martini olives. Yeah, so. Yes, but this is an olive that would fit in a James Bond glass. You know what I mean about that? Yeah. James, you know why James Bond wanted to shake his martini? I figured this all out because I went for many, many years about the James Bond martini. Do you know what, you know what I realized? The reason why James Bond too. needed to shake it is, but yeah, but the people watching haven't. The reason why James Bond needed to shake it is because his martini is like nine ounces. He needed all that all that dilution, and so he needs a large glass, and it's gonna fit these large olives. Yeah, this is a huge olive, though. But it was the, the most aesthetically pleasing olive. That's why I picked it. Is it aesthetically pleasing in this cocktail, it, though? I don't know. Well, that's because you that. picked the wrong glassware, but... Uh, but no, I picked itself. the right glassware. Look at the wash line is perfect. The I picked the correct glassware. The all right, nicest. let's taste this. Fantastic on so many levels. First of all, it is everything that I love about a martini, but it's low ABV. The other thing is that it plays up the dry vermouth and then you get a little bit of the bite from that gin. So you get those nice botanicals from the gin and you get that little bite, but then you also get all of the vermouth flavor. And then you wouldn't think it, but the orange bitters with the olive are fantastic. Uh, it's just a really nice martini variation just uh, something that you can drink before you go out, uh, not kill your night. Um, and then it kind of scratches the same itch as a martini. So there it is, guys, the Sable. So the last cocktail we're doing today is called a Sherry Colada from bartender Ron Duan of Baldwin Bar in Boston, Massachusetts, which is my hometown. I always gotta get a little shout out every single time we do a Boston cocktail. Kind of like the annoying habit that I have at the movies when every time I see Boston, I have to be like, that's Boston! And everyone's like, yeah, we know. Anyway, just thought I'd share. You're one of All those right. guys. What? You're one of those people. Right? One of those people, yeah, you know? But when what's funny is that when I see LA in movies, I'm not like, it's LA! Because it's like every movie is shot partially in LA. So it's not as it's not as exciting. When I was growing up, I wasn't I wasn't around the film industry really very much. You know, there's a little little film stuff going on, but this was before Marky Mark became Mark Wahlberg, you know? So it was like, you know, it was like right at the, like when I was like just coming of age, like it was like right as Goodwill Hunting was getting famous and like Boston was like put on the map kind of-ish. I don't know. I can stop rambling anyway. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is crush up a lemon and do three quarters an ounce of lemon juice, one ounce pineapple juice, one ounce cream of coconut, coconut cream, whatever, I made this myself, two ounces of the Amontillado sherry. Just like one of those little pebble, a nice stemmed glass would be nice for it. 
you can feel free to shake until all the ice is gone or not. You just want to make sure that you get it chill and you get the dilution going so that when it sits on the crushed ice or the pebble ice, whatever you're using, it doesn't dilute super quickly. All right, we'll just pour it into our glass. And then we're just going to add in pebble like so. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of Angostura bitters on top, a couple few dashes. And then we're just gonna to top it off with a nice little pebble ice topper. I like that two-tone sort of kind of trapping the Angostura so that kind of creates a little level. And there it is. It's a beautiful cocktail. Let's give it a sip. Mm. It's like warm and tropical, but at the same time, very savory, you know, from the sherry. So sherry kind of has that sort of acidic kind of feel to it. Not as acidic as something like vinegar, but it's like very warm in flavor, very savory and acidic. It just goes really, really well. You get that nice lemon pop, you get the pineapple and uh, coconut. And the th but the thing about it is that it's not something that you would say like, oh, this is a tiki cocktail. Like it is not as tropical as you would think because you have all of that tempering the other flavors, so they're not as sharp, but they work really beautifully together. So this is gonna be making it into my low ABV repertoire. It's a fantastic drink. Cheers to you, Rondwan. There it is, the Sherry Colada. So there it is, guys, three low ABV cocktails for your session drinking needs. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. And we were using these lovely borosilicate glass straws from Surfside Sips. If you go to their uh, website, surfsidesips.com and put in the code BARFLY, you can get 20% off at checkout. Uh, they are fantastic straws. We've been using them for a very long time here on the show, and we love them. So check those out, and uh, see you guys on another time. Okay. Yeah? Should I, like, put more Ango on here and refresh the ice a little? Uh, you can, yeah.